All right, a little talk through of 10.4. I've gone through and just kind of made notes and, and done a lot of the work um, ahead of time, and I just kind of want to talk about what's happening, where numbers are coming from, how we're getting those things, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> to find the number of terms being added, we're going to look at the upper limit minus the lower limit plus 1, and that's going to come into play here starting with uh, example A. So uh, just kind of working from the top down. This is arithmetic, and what we're looking for is would this create a linear pattern? Um, a lot of times it will be like a, a number times a variable, variable and then subtract another number, add another number. Um, you want to think, if I were to plot this, would it be linear? Would it make a line on a graph? And this would. Okay, so that's our giveaway for if it's arithmetic. So because of that, we are going to use our arithmetic sum formula, uh, which I believe was from 10.2. So here's our arithmetic sum formula. So I know there's a lot of lines and stuff going on. I'm going to try my best to be clear <clears throat> at what everything is pointing to and kind of how that's affecting it. I've tried to color coordinate things for you. Um, so our number of terms, we're taking our top minus our bottom plus one. And we, uh, again, we found that kind of that was told to us here. So. We're using our 35 minus 1 plus 1. 35 minus 1 is 34, plus 1 is 35. So for this one, we end up with 35. That's our number of terms. We're, I'm going to replace n with 35 here. I'm also replacing n here with 35 here. Okay. So this is our general formula. I've taken that and I've gotten this S sub 35 by finding my number of terms. I was also able to get in my from my formula 35 over 2. So ignore all of this for right now. We should just be clear on how we got to this point. The next thing we're doing, our A sub 1 is the value of our first term. The way that we figure that out is we take our starting term we plug it in, so that is, uh, if our first term is 1, we're saying 5 times 1 minus 9, which is giving us that negative 4 there. 5 times 1 is 5, minus, one, minus 9, negative 4. We're doing the same thing with our purple here. Plug in the second term. So that's a sub number term that we're trying to get to. So where we're starting, where we're trying to get to. So that's 5 times 35 minus 9, which gives us 166. Okay, once we've plugged everything in here, then we're going to follow our order of operations to evaluate. So I went ahead, I didn't do this and get a decimal. You could, you could do 35 divided by 2 and just, you know, work with, uh, with your decimal right here if you wanted to, but... Um, <clears throat> I just decided to leave it as a fraction. I decided to put these together first, um, parentheses, 166 minus 4, 162. Then I cross-canceled. Um, 2 canceled out, 162 became 81. And now I'm multiplying 35 times 81. And that's how I got 2,835. Um, so it is just kind of a sequence of plugging things in, cleaning things up, evaluating. Hopefully that helps clarify where things are coming from, how we created those things. So um, let's take a look at a geometric sequence. <clears throat> so with geometric, we know that it's going to be geometric if we're raised to a variable power. So something to the n power or n minus 1 or um, we're raising to a variable power. Um, so here we go, taking a look here. This is my general rule for this, okay? So there's my general geometric. I think we looked at that at 10.3. The number term, we're doing the same thing. We're taking 30 minus 8, 
and then adding 1. So 30 minus 8, 22 plus 1, 23. So I can use 23 in my general term for n here. I can also replace this n up here. So if you see, I highlighted in blue both those places. So we're comparing the general rule to kind of what I've filled in here. Um, our a sub 1 is the beginning of the sequence. So in this case, we're using 8. That's our beginning of the sequence as at the eighth term. Um, so what we're doing from here <clears throat> is um, a couple things. In order to figure out the beginning of the sequence, I have to take this, this eighth term and plug it in. So I'm saying 2 to the eighth times 5. I just rewrote it. But it's 2 to the eighth times 5. And that gave me 1,280. Um, I'm also going to fill out 2 to the 23rd power, which gives me this horrendous number here. Um, we're not like including that negative. We're just raising 2 to the 23rd power, that negative staying there. And that gives us this number here. Um, I then... I'm just following order of operations and solving it out. So I'm doing parentheses first. That gave me this. Then I multiplied these two numbers together and got negative, is that uh, 10 billion, 737 million, 416,960, right? So I multiplied that out. It's still negative because and it's still sitting over negative 1. And then when I work that out, it just becomes positive. So that's how I got there. Okay, so hopefully this is clarifying for you some of the process, how this works. Um, and it can be applied, this process can be applied to all of our other problems. Um, I just kind of want you to see each piece. Okay, so remember we have our starting number and our ending number. And we're checking here first to see, is it arithmetic, geometric, or neither? If it's neither, we're going to use the general, kind of our general rule. This one is not arithmetic. It's not linear because it's being raised to the second power. Um, and it is not geometric because we don't have an, we have an exponent, but it's not a variable. Our exponent is 2. So um, because it is not a variable... This is not a geometric sequence. This is just general. So what we do is we are going to take our starting number, 4, and we're going to work all the way up to our ending number, 7. So we have 4, 5, 6, 7. And we are taking each one of those and we are applying it into this formula. So we're saying 4 to the second power minus 1. 5 to the second power minus 1, 6 to the second power minus 1, 7 to the second power minus 1. When we evaluate that, 4 squared is 16 minus 1, 15. 25 minus 1, 24. 36 minus 1 is 35. 49 minus 1 is 48. Once we get these values, we just add them up. And that gives us 122. Okay. Okay. Uh, there were some special things about um, infinity and, and that. Go back and watch the video. Um, hopefully now you have a better understanding of how these pieces work so that kind of more of the special um, parts of this make more sense. So I would say watch this and then maybe compare it to Mr. Burl's video and see um, where they, if you're still experiencing some gaps. But... Um, just this one's geometric. There's a special rule about it. I don't want to get into, uh, Mr. Bro explains it. Uh, this one is linear or arithmetic. This one's geometric. This one is neither. This is absolute value. So we're not really working with, um, with either of those things. So we would use general rule here. And again, this is being, um, 
raised so raised to a variable power so that's going to be geometric i didn't want to talk about um oh and i totally skipped over the practice down here but let's take a look at k just kind of in terms of how we're pulling our numbers from our word problem here i uh, use sigma notation so that's this piece here to write an expression that indicates the sum then find the sum so a geometric series has nine terms with the first term two and a common ratio of three. So our first term, we usually call that a sub one is two. Um, and common ratio of negative three. So here's kind of how we build this out. We take our sigma and we're doing our parameters. We're starting at our first term. We're going up to our ninth term. So we start at term number one, work up to term number nine. Um, and the way we build this out, we use our common ratio is kind of what is anchoring us. And then um, to the n minus 1 power, and then times 2. So think about it like this. We're using n minus 1 because if I plug in for my first term a 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. So think about anything to the 0 power is just a 1. So that means our first term is 2. So that's kind of how we build that out. It's the same thing over here. Um, if we can, actually, I'll just erase this so there's not too much going on, and then I'll rebuild it, hopefully correctly. Um, so use sigma notation to write an expression that indicates the sum. We have a geometric series with eight terms. So we're going up to term 8. We're starting at term 1. Uh, the first term is 25. So that's my a sub 1 is 25. That's what we're trying to make. We've been given the common ratio of 1 fifth. So we have 1 over 5. And think about it. It, it works out if we do 1 minus 1. So our first term minus 1. That's going to make 0. Right? Think about if I had 1 over 5 and I'm trying to create If I'm trying to make 25, so if my first term, we're kind of doing some backwards work here. Well, 1 minus 1 would make 0, so 1 over 5 to the 0 power would just be a 1. And what would 1 need to multiply with in order to make 25? It would have to multiply with 25. So for our general rule, it's going to be 25 times that mass. And so that's where those numbers came from. Um, and then you would take your general formulas that you've created and apply them to the sums like you did above okay so i hope this helps you and um if you have more questions you can email um, but uh, we're taking a lot of what we worked on in 10 2 10 3 and we're just looking we're using a different notation than we're used to seeing to help us organize that so i uh, hope this is helpful